This is One Year Later. This is a series where we take a look at prospects from the 2019 NHL Entry Draft, and we take a look at how they're doing after that draft. We talked already about Moritz Sider, the sixth overall pick by the Detroit Red Wings. And we talked about Alex Newhook, the guy who went from the BCHL to the NCAA and is making Colorado fans all over the world extraordinarily excited. Next up on the chopping block, it's Vasily Podkolzin, the 10th overall draft pick from the Vancouver Canucks. In the draft that was held in Vancouver, the guy who, walking outside into the alleyways, had Vancouver Canucks fans kneeling before him in the stands, which was a very, very poetic scene right there. But in this video, we're going to be discussing how Vasily Podkolzin went from the draft year which was not necessarily something that a lot of people would say was amazing, to a 10th overall pick, to where he is now, and will define what exactly he's been doing over the past few months, and why he's a notable prospect today. Back in the 2019 NHL Entry Draft, Vasily Podkolzin was one of the most polarizing draft prospects in the entire selection of players. Throughout the entire year, people pegged him as a top three talent, and the reason for that is because in the Ivan Hlinka Gretzky tournament, all the way back in August of 2018, Podkolzin was an absolute stud. 11 points in 5 games played, and 8 goals. He was one of the top point scorers in that tournament tied with Alexi Lafreniere. He had more points than Ryan Suzuki, Kirby Duck, and a few other guys who were also eligible for the 2019 draft. In this tournament, Podkolzin showed off his utter dominance in competition against U18 players. The work ethic, the skill, the dangles, the pants flying off left and right when Podkolzin would go inside-outside, the wrist shot, and the overall aggressiveness. These were the things that made Podkolzin stand out to scouts, and it made him seem like such a valuable pick in the 2019 draft, so much so that he he was a very early third overall projected player before the season even began. People were saying it would be Hughes, and then Newhook, and then Pud Colson. This is before Capo Caco entered the frame as a top two talent. Pud Colson, because of this Linka Gretzky, was in that conversation, and that continued throughout the entire year, despite the fact that his draft year production-wise really wasn't that great. Playing in the VHL, Podkolzin had 5 points in 14 games. In the MHL, he got 8 points in 12 games. And in the KHL, he played 3 games and got 0 points. Podkolzin was bouncing all over the place, and he didn't have any stability in whatever teams he was playing on. As a result, the production didn't really seem to translate or flow all too well in Podkolzin's statistical profile. Sure, he played for the Russian U18 team, and he had 33 points and 26 total games played with that squad, but his league play wasn't the best. But a lot of people will be quick to point out, hey, the guy was only playing like 5 minutes a night. The guy was being shuffled around everywhere. He didn't have any time to develop proper chemistry. But if you give this guy the space, give him the tools to succeed, give him the right opportunities to grow, then he's going to be great. He's still a third overall worthy player, and that was the back and forth narrative. I don't want to say that either narrative was right or wrong, but once the 2019 NHL entry draft rolled around, people saw Pod Colson as a pretty typical top 10 guy. I didn't really see anybody rank him outside the top 10 other than Craig Button eventually, I believe. But Pod Colson eventually did drop, and he eventually was selected 10th overall by the Vancouver Canucks. The Canucks actually said afterwards that Pod Colson was indeed their best player available at that spot. All the other guys that they had ranked ahead of Pod Colson were already gone, and that kind of pays tribute to the idea that Pod Colson was more than just a top 10 pick in the eyes of the Vancouver Canucks. Now, Canucks fans everywhere were very reluctant on the pick. 
Some of them loved it right out of the gate, because they went with the narrative that Pod Colson was still a third overall caliber player who dominated U18 competition and who just absolutely could take over a game with his aggressiveness. Others, though, like myself, were kind of held back a little bit. And I can remember in the video that I made where I reacted to the Pod Colson pick, I said specifically that if this works out, if he fulfills his ceiling, this will be an incredible pick at 10. But the likelihood of him finding stability to allow that to happen wasn't something that I identified was the most accessible. So I went into the season thinking, okay, we'll go into a year, see what Pod Colson is made of, he'll play KHL the entire time, and it will be one of the two years he spends under contract in the KHL before he comes over to Vancouver. Well, he just wrapped up his KHL season because the KHL just suspended and cancelled the rest of their year, and Pod Colson finished off with 8 points in 30 games played. However, that's really, really misleading. And if you've been watching this channel for a while, you know why that's misleading. Because Pod Colson, for the first 17 games of the year, he was only being played like 5, 6, sometimes 3, sometimes 2, sometimes a little bit more than that, minutes of ice time per game. Pod Colson wasn't really relied upon, and he had zero points in his first 17 games. That all changed at the end of January, where starting things out on January 21st, Pod Colson was given a little bit more time. He started to get more than 10 minutes of ice time per game, and he ended the regular season with 8 points in the last 13 games of play. That was great. And in fact, we started to see the highlights show themselves off a little bit more. Assists that were created by Pod Colson's work ethic, him going in there, battling it out on the boards, giving defenders a hard time, stealing the puck away, and centering it with some pretty nice passes. Pod Colson, in general, was a player who we saw grow in that small sample size of 13 games. Not to mention in the World Juniors, he had five points in seven games played, and he could have had so much more points if his line mates could have just finished a little bit more. He was so good setting up all these guys with crazy nice passes, but the finishing of that Team Russia team wasn't the best for all these pod calls and opportunities that he set up, and as a result, he was only capped off at five points. Then come the KHL playoffs. His team actually swept the opponent, and they won in four games. Pod Colson had three points in those four games, used as a very reliable middle six forward. Pod Colson has legitimately showed off to everybody that he is a legit hockey player. And now, Canucks fans watching the highlights over the past two months, as opposed to the last year, are getting really excited. Because this is just Pod Colson when he's getting played 10 minutes a night. What more if he plays upwards of 22, 23 minutes per night, like we know Pod Colson wants to do? Pod Colson's a guy who a lot of people described as a bulldog, a guy who people said was a lion, a guy who goes out there and he works 110% on every shift, in every area of the ice, and he's a guy who his teammates will rally around because he makes everybody on his team want to do better. This is why the Vancouver Canucks drafted him, not just because of the skill he displayed at the Hlinka and the offense that's untapped within the potential of his game, but because having Pod Colson on your team will inspire, ignite, and make the rest of your squad better mentally, physically, and more cohesive. This is a player that I'm really happy to see grow and develop because the way he's trending right now, I have no doubts that Pod Colson will be an effective NHL player. Now, what's the ceiling? Do I say he's a 50 point guy? No, not necessarily. But I do say that Pod Colson goes into the NHL and he doesn't look out of place. That will probably come in a calendar year once his second and final year under this KHL contract expires. 
He has to wait another year, play it out once more in Russia before he's allowed to come over to Vancouver. He said he's going to honor the contract because he doesn't want to ditch the team that signed him originally, which is indeed pretty admirable. I'm not going to fault the guy for that. Especially with the idea that a lot of the NCAA guys needed to take two years to develop anyway, and that was in college hockey, or in minor hockey, or in junior hockey, but Pod Colson is legitimately playing pro hockey already, and he's doing well? Yeah. I think I've done enough explaining as to why I believe Pod Colson has legitimately bounced back from a draft pick that not everybody was super excited about, to one that most people can look at and say, yeah, you know, I see where the hype is coming from now. I see what makes him a valuable player. If I were to get an NHL comparable, I would say that if you wanted to take a look at it, I'd say Pod Colson looks like an Antoine Roussel out there, but with much more skill. You know how Roussel's always out there? Motors clicking at 110%. He's always hard on the forecheck. He never gives up on a shift. Pod Colson is like that, but Pod Colson also has some incredibly great offensive skills too that I will admit do need a little bit more refinement and there is a lot more to be discovered once that refinement is given, but it's scary thinking of the potential that Pod Colson does bring because with a motor like an Antoine Roussel and the puck skills like a Pod Colson has, if you put that together and you have a successful package, Worst case scenario, you're getting a winger who can go out there and give his enemies a very hard time while also be beloved by his teammates. And best case scenario, you're getting somebody who is like that, but who can also put upwards of 50, 60, maybe even 70 points in an NHL season. We'll see where he comes along in about a year from now. But for now, that wraps up this video. Hope you enjoyed this video. Social that trolls 99. Comment down below what you think about Vasily Pod Colson, all your thoughts, few and far between, and bye.